welcome to this video log with me Wayne from swimmingcyclingrunning.com. Well today I'm going to make you another one of my guarantees and I'm going to give you five drills that I'm going to guarantee will improve your front crawl swimming. You heard it right. Five drills guaranteed to improve your front crawl swimming. What I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the drill, demonstrate it, go to the computer and see some examples and then we'll come back at the end and we'll chat again. Please remember that with every single drill you do, there's good and there's bad. We're isolating elements of the stroke. And if you don't know the bad bits that can come about, you may fall into traps. I don't want you to do that. So hopefully we'll steer clear of those as we progress through these drills. OK, so the first drill we're going to look at is finger trail. I think this is, should be a key drill for any front crawl swimmer because it's so relaxed and it really does raise the elbow. Now to do it, and I'm going to turn on my side here, you want to have a nice relaxed recovery with the fingers trailing through the water. And the recovery doesn't end until you place your hand in the water in line with your shoulder. So we're coming forward with the trail and landing in line with our shoulder. That's how you do it. Now I'll show you on the side once again. You really want to use your shoulder muscles here to pull your arm up. The bottom of your arm, the forearm should be really loose and just reach forward and the reason for that is in the recovery phase there is absolutely no propulsion to be gained so the more relaxed you are the fewer muscles you use the less energy you're wasting in the stroke and that's hugely important especially for triathletes and long-distance swimmers okay so let's go to the old computer have a look at that and see how it's done by swimmers when you do finger drag, what you, the aim is to have a really relaxed drive forward and the fingers literally just trail through the water all the way to the front of the stroke. Here are another two experiments of finger drag doing it really nicely and relaxed. You can see it looks so so easy but they are actually swimming at a reasonable speed. Now. A drill that I think is overlooked to a certain extent is a thing called extended shark fin. It's something I use based on the shark fin drill, which is like this. The shark fin drill, you have your head in the water, you raise your arm up, you put it back down. Raise your arm up, put it back down. But we can extend that because if you raise your arm up the first time and then come forward and do a stroke yeah, and then do it the other side, you're actually extending that so that you keep the head still when you go from side to side. And that's one of the keys to the drill. Firstly, you want to breathe. So you breathe as the arm's coming up. That promotes breathing in the correct place in front crawl, because that's where you're meant to breathe. And then you don't breathe. Rotate to the other side. You don't breathe on that one and you keep your head dead still and that promotes keeping your head still whilst your body is rotating from side to side. To practice for the extended shark fin drill it's quite useful to do the shark fin drill itself which is just raising the arm up to the underarm and then back down again and if you can breathe as the arm rises that's where you should breathe, be breathing in front crawl as you finish the stroke so it's a very good way to practice before you go into the extended shark fin drill. So key points on the extended shark fin drill, you want to breathe early as your arm recovers, because that's where you should be breathing in front crawl. Then the arm goes back down on the side of your body and comes forward and releases the other arm. There. Nice and relaxed and then forward. Up, breathing, just at the beginning, down, and it comes up and goes forward. And notice as it goes forward, you can see that arm coming into the water as the catch is made so that we can make maximum distance per stroke. All right, we're now going to have a look at the broken arrow draw. And the broken arrow promotes using your shoulder primarily to recover your arm in the water. Now, I'll be on my side. I'll raise my arm up. And you can see my hand's pointing backwards. 
I'll then drop my hand forward and drive forward. Then I'll do it with the other hand. Now, it's important in all these drills that the lead hand has the palm pointing down to the floor of the pool. And as your arm comes up, it comes up straight, forward, and then it goes. So your arm stays on the surface until that happens and then it can go. Because that's when you're going to be rotating back to the other side and that's when you can get the catch. So that's important. Okay, let's again go to the computer and see how that works. When we swim any stroke, we really want to use the shoulder muscles primarily to bring the arm forward. And a good drill for that is the broken arrow. And the broken arrow is where we raise the arm up straight with the palm of the hand pointing backwards. We then go into an arrow shape and then forward. And this way you have to bring your arm up using the shoulder muscles. You can see that. Using the shoulder muscles, then break into the arrow position and drive forward. And you drive forward straight in line with that shoulder. Again, arms brought up by the shoulder muscles, pointing forward, then down. And this really is just making sure that you're only using those muscles to bring your arm forward. If you're making huge efforts to bring your arm forward using all the muscles in your back and your shoulder and your chest, then effectively you're wasting effort. Because there's nothing propulsive about the recovery of your arms in any swimming stroke. And you want them to take the minimum amount of effort you can possibly make. Another drill, swimming with your fists clenched, I think is hugely important. It promotes using the, the underarm, the forearm, as the main propulsive factor. Because if your fist's clenched, yeah, that's what you need to do to grab the water and move it back. And it's surprising that with this drill, you do not lose much speed. You lose a little bit, but you don't lose a lot of speed. But you really do gain a lot of feel for the water, especially when you reintroduce those hands and try and get maximum distance per stroke. Your feeling for the water, your sensitivity, will improve by clenching your fists and making sure you grab the water with your underarm. OK, again, let's go to the computer, see how that works out. When you're doing the fists drill, the aim is to grab the water with as much as the forearm as you can. You can see both these swimmers are doing exactly that. You can see they're keeping their elbow high, grabbing the water with their forearm and driving back. It's usually more difficult to do it with one arm than the other, so you really have to think about it nearly all the time. I'll show you that again. Grabbing the water. You can see that arm is pointing down with the hand and then driving back. And exactly the same with the other swimmer, driving back. And you can see, keep the elbow high and then point the arm and hand down. And you'll find that the fact that you haven't got hands doesn't actually impede you too much. OK, so here's another key drill that I think people should do. And that's single arm holding a pull boy to isolate the other arm. I'm going to go on my side here. Now if you do single arm, a lot of people stop there. We don't want to stop there. What we actually want to do is we want to turn on our side and extend so we rotate to the other side, maximise our stroke and then go through. And remember, maximise, get into the catch position, drive through. And that's what you're meant to do. And as you drive through, drive through under the body, yeah, so you go straight down the centre line and you rotate again out the way of that hand at the back. Again, let's go to the computer and see how it's done. As drills isolate a particular position, you want to do them correctly. And with the single arm with pull boy drill, it's hugely important that you rotate to the opposite side to maximise your strength. You can see here, maximise the length of your stroke. Um, you can see here from that position where the hips are turned, they're going to turn the other way. And in doing that, we've extended our arm beyond the other hand. So where we have the hands level, as we rotate, that hand extends beyond that position. So we're maximising the stroke. And from that position, we can move into the catch. And once we've moved into the catch, we're pushing backwards on the water and 
we're actually making an effective stroke and that's really what we want. So if you look at these going through, you can see both of these boys are really grabbing the water and rotating. And so are these, you can see that huge rotation to one side. If you don't do the rotation, you've not got it right. Now here we have someone who's not rotating to the other side. And you can see that arm is level with the hand at full extent and that's where they're coming back from and they don't quite make the catch and they're not rotating those hips. You can see these hips are very static in the water. That way when they're breathing they rotate but they don't rotate to the other side at all. So that static feel to the swim is reducing the distance of the stroke. You can see it never gets past that point. We really want maximum distance and rotation when we swim and so with this particular swimmer that's what we, we would be emphasizing. Okay so there we have it, five drills I guarantee will help you improve your front crawl. Let's run through them again. So in no particular order we have extended shark fin, lovely drill and if you control it and do it correctly it will be good. Build up to it with the shark fin, we've shown you both single arm with a pull boy. Now this drill is only good if you do it correctly and to do that you have to rotate to both sides. It promotes extended reach and a good catch. That's what we want. Drive through under the body and breathe in your recovery. Okay. Thirdly, but not necessarily thirdly in importance, we have swimming with fists. Now swimming with fists, as we said, promotes a really good feel for the water once you reintroduce your hands. You don't lose much speed, but it really does help you with your front crawl. Fourthly, we have broken arrow, and that promotes shoulder use when we're doing the recovery. And it really is important that you don't drag your hand forward, but you drag your arm forward. And that really is important for this drill. And lastly, finger trail. Remember, finger trail, really nice recovery. Again, recovering with the shoulder, not pulling the hand forward, which always drops the elbow. So we're promoting high elbow all the time. And those five drills together are bound to improve your front crawl. I guarantee it. Just incorporate it into your sessions. A few done every time you swim will help you improve in the long run. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed that. It's been useful for you. See you soon. Keep well.